I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, why this book and um, because last year Tommy wrote this book The Nature of Things which is a wonderful book about your work and then just what it's coming out nine months later or something <laughs> this one so beyond writing two books in a few years um, what was the thought behind the tapestry design book and why did you write that book? Okay well the idea for the book of essays sort of came first. I was thinking of it as a um, almost like a visual memoir. I realized after a period of time that I had a body of work that was nature oriented. And there were certain themes within that overarching um, uh, theme of, of my celebration of the natural world. Um, and so I started that first and I had approached Schiffer originally, uh, when that idea first popped into my head about that. And at that point, and I don't know if they do now or not, but at that point, they said they did not publish memoirs. Oh. So I thought, okay, they don't publish memoirs. All right, I'll look for somewhere else. And I have a writer friend who suggested a couple of publishing companies, and I contacted them, never heard from either one of them, uh, never even um, no replied to my email or anything. And um, I thought, well, you know, there's a small press here at the university, and I do know the, the uh, managing, um, uh, the faculty advisor for the press, and I'll make a proposal to the University of North Georgia Press. And so I did, did I did not call favors in, but you know, I followed their writer's guidelines, submitted a proposal, and um, so that was accepted. I do think because I did have a long tie, I do have long ties to the university having taught here many decades um, and I'm Professor Emerite in art. I think that probably that link helped the press be interested in my work. And so that's how that one came about. Um, I had started doing booklet kinds of handouts for my classes. And in the last maybe eight years, I've been teaching about design for tapestry. And each time I'd revise the handout or develop a, you know, a, a, I did a couple of classes that were just specifically about color and tapestry. So I had that handout. And one day when I decided I would retire, re-retire from teaching, um, <laughs> although I kind of backtracked on that one already. But um, anyway, I thought, well, I will give my handouts away um, as PDFs, just pass them out to whoever wants them. And then I thought, you know, I worked kind of long and hard on those. <laughs> and I revised and rewritten and hmm, maybe I don't want to just give them away. Maybe I'll contact um, Schiffer because I respect Schiffer's um, books, and especially their fiber books. And so I, I thought, well, I'll write a proposal and see. Um, so that was in September of 2018. I had already made the proposal for the other book and I still hadn't heard from it. So in 2018, I put out two book proposals thinking, all right, maybe one will be picked up and I'll, uh, I'll run with that and then put the other one on the back burner. And um, in October of 2018, I heard from the editor, uh, Sandra Karinczak at um, Shifford that they, they would like to accept that proposal. Um, or, or read a more fleshed out proposal, let's just say that they hadn't accepted yet. So 2019 in that, for I think it was the first week in January in 2019, I got an acceptance of the memoir book from University of North Georgia. About five days later, I got an acceptance from Schiffer <laughs> about the other book. And I went into my time, my husband's business one afternoon and my eyes were as big around as saucers. <laughs> and I said, pardon me, you can edit this out. I said, shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so it terrified me. But I thought, you know, I don't want to lose either opportunity 
And so I began to write in earnest on the memoir, the essays book. And um, bit by bit, started rewriting the handouts for the, um, that I've been using in classes. And I tell you, I really thought, and you probably experienced this as well with your book, uh, because you've developed a lot of material uh, for your online teaching and for your, your um, in-person teaching. I thought that I would just kind of rewrite my handouts and add some images. And um, the other day I listened to your podcast and so much of what you were saying, I thought I can relate to that. I can relate to that because it turned into a way bigger project. And I um, essentially rewrote everything that I had ever written about design and added um, a lot more, did a lot of research um, um, read a lot and just other things began to come in like the critique idea I was thinking okay I need to uh, uh, deal with that uh, one day I thought I need to do something about cartoons that's more in depth so I added that uh, Jean-Pierre and uh, uh, Yadin's book was published and I thought oh, I need to deal with mounting and finishing in some way, but I also want to be sure to direct people to that book for, um, for more conservation kinds of things. But I was already reading about textile conservation to some extent. So it was, it was tough um, doing both of them, but I'm, I'm really, um, uh, really glad that I did. Um, Tommy's book is a beautiful, large format, spiral bound book with great photographs and a really nice index and table of contents. It's extremely user friendly and well laid out. She uses the word exploration instead of exercise for her suggested practice sequences, and she's going to tell us why that is. And I did use the word explorations, although I call it study sometime and I call it exercises sometimes. But I really wanted to make the point that when you're exploring, you're kind of maybe playing a little bit. Um, and when you're doing a study, it's almost like there's a set answer you need to come up with. So um, I, I really want to encourage people to, to do as much or as little just exploring these ideas. People who've gone to art school, all of this may be just, you know, old hat. And you, you think, well, let me refresh myself a little bit and I don't really need to do any of this. And that's fine. That's just fine. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's when you give yourself a little time to mess around, sometimes things turn up that you didn't expect them. Sometimes they're good things. Yeah, when questions come up, I've already in the course of working on this book come up with so many more ways to think about design that could be applicable to somebody wanting to weave tapestry than I had two and a half years ago, three years ago, whenever I started it. So it's helpful for me to um, try to work through questions, I guess. So. Yeah, and I, I guess that's another point about the book that I should bring up is that um, there's so many ideas here. And I think that a lot of people design best in different ways. And you've sort of covered a lot of different bases of what might appeal to one person might not appeal to someone else, but this other thing might be exactly what they needed to um, come up with some designs. So I thought that was really well done. Well, good. Thank you. I, I hope so, because it is, you know, I've, I've seen this all through the years of teaching, uh, especially in art ed classes. I keep going back to that art ed class because the people in that class were there because they had to be. They had to take an art class <laughs> for their education degree, but many of them had not had art since middle school or maybe not even then. At one point, you know, you had an option of taking music or art 
mm-hmm. and nothing in between, <laughs> um, or not both of them. So um, I really, as I know you do, want people to be feeling successful with their ventures in visual making. Um, I don't want anybody to feel they can't do something. And nor do I want those people who feel like they're perfectionist to think that they shouldn't do it until they can do it absolutely right. Um, There's no absolute right in visual art, I don't think.